didn't get the color then. Don't Let start. Bruce don't intro. Start yet. I have to start first. Oh, you're already We're lying. waiting on people. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Hey, there's our first one. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Let's see if we can get another one with that technique. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, we got two more. We're up to three. Oh my God, how much more do you want to listen to this nonsense? We'll stop that right now. Good morning, Joanna. Welcome aboard. Well, good morning to everybody. I'm Bruce. I'll be doing your camera and narration. And welcome to the Art of Fire. Today our theme is creating Valentine's gifts. So let me give you a quick rundown of what we're going to do first. Uh, we're going to have a demonstration of a long stem jack in the pulpit. We'll have a multicolor basket, a cake dish, and a heart. Good morning, Matthew. Hello, David Hogan. He got the meow. Okay, we got the meow mix working. Let me give you a quick view of some of the things you'll see. And there's a few things up here you might not see. But at any rate, this is the Jack in the Pulpit right here. Kind of reminds you of the little flower. Beautiful little, like, uh, single flower vase. So that's a really great Valentine's present. We don't have a box, a basket up here, but we'll be making a cake dish. You'll have to get your own sweet treats though, but Josh is going to show you a real sweet treat in the way of a cake plate. And uh, then the last thing we'll demonstrate will be the blown hearts, which are really interesting pieces. If you were with us last week, you saw the black and white reticello piece and also the three trail vase there which is also doing quite well with the flowers in it last week's winner is on board with us right now i saw her check in joanna Rignica is winner of last week's drawing which is the uh, trumpet uh, flower vase and next week if you comment you'll be entered into drawing for this beautiful aqua long stem champagne flute so without further ado Pack up the babies, grab the old ladies, it's time for Brother Love's Traveling Glass Blowing Show. Turn around here, Brother Love, say hi to us, Mr. Foster. Hey, hey good, hey, morning, good morning, buddy. Okay. Welcome to the Traveling Glass Blower Show. Okay. All right. Hey, we got Colin from uh, Eastbourne, England. Wonderful. We're really picking up an international following here, aren't we? Where are we? He's in uh, Eastbourne. I'm not exactly sure of where that is. Are you, Foster? Foster learned his glass blowing in Great Britain. He uh, went to the Dudley School. Yeah, in the, in the West Midlands. Yeah. In the West Midlands. Okay, so right now what he's done is he's picked up a piece of color on the end of his blowpipe. The piece uh, was rewarmed to about, or warmed to about 900 degrees. What color is that, Foster? Uh, this is a celadine color. It's an opalescent color. Um, that uh, is a uh, copper-based color. Okay. Um, when you're talking the uh, science and chemistry of colored glass. All righty. Very good. So the glass was about 900 degrees when Foster picked it up out of the annealing oven, and his pipe was preheated to at least the same temperature, maybe a little bit more, and then allowed the two pieces to stick together. And now he's melting the color on the end of the blowpipe, and then once it gets a little bit soft and malleable, he'll take it over the marver and shape it up. Okay. They watched season two of Blown Away last night. Yeah, uh -huh. that's a great show, now, folks. Now, Bruce, don't spoil it like you did last week. Yeah. Don't give away a La spoiler. Last week, I gave away the results of a football game, which was really, <laughs> really a bad move on my part. Okay. So Foster now has pressurized the air in the blowpipe. The bubble is expanding on the end. You can see it taking on a more rounded shape. There we go. Good. All right. Okie doke. So now with the celadon color inflated a little bit, there's a little bit of air inside. He'll go back and gather again from the furnace. Our furnace holds about 400, degree, uh, 400 pounds of 2,000 degree molten glass. And it's clear glass. Uh, were we to melt color, then we'd be stuck making that color all week. Good morning, Patrick. Welcome aboard. And Patricia from Ellicott City. Okay. All righty. Here comes Foster with his first gather of glass on the end of the blowpipe. 
you'll use the cherry wood block to shape it. This does a couple of things. It kind of stabilizes or sets up the outside surface of the glass and gives them a nice rounded shape. This prepares the shape for blowing. The shape we use it, uh, really has a big effect on how the glass blows out. And there you saw the steam rising up from the block. That's simply because the water was heated. It creates that bed of steam and the glass rolls smoothly. A quick blast of air and he's got the color inflated inside the bubble. Welcome, man. Well, we're happy to have you uh, here to see today's creation. For those of you who joined us in the last couple of moments, Foster is making a long stem jack in the pulpit. Okay? So, he's going to go back for another gather. He waits a little bit uh, between gathers for the glass to cool. He doesn't want the extreme heat of the next gather to make it collapse. If he went in too soon, then he'd have to be re-establishing the bubble and getting things right. Kate asks, how long do the wooden tools last? Uh, they'll last a couple of years easily, sometimes three or four years. It depends on how we use them. Uh, you'll notice that Foster took his blocks away right about the time it was starting to steam. If uh, the glass blower is a little bit careless and runs the hot glass in the dry block, that shortens the life of it. So he's got it kept in that uh, metal bucket there, and he'll start. Well, hello, Fern, welcome aboard. And Sharon, thank you. She says, we make a gray day bright. Thank you. So Foster has now inflated the glass a little more. He's going to work on uh, getting the size and shape of that like he wants, and then he'll drop it into the optic mold over there. Those aluminum canisters are uh, shaped with ridges in them, and that's how we impart the shapes to the pieces. If he gets this really hot right now, it'll just kind of drip right in. There it goes. See it fall in? And then he'll blow with the pressurized air pushing out against the piece. We've got the ridges in it. So there's our design element. And since it's just an optical effect, that's why we call it an optic mold. But uh, later on, you'll see the use of a mold that actually creates pretty much the final shape of the piece. And that'll be the heart later on. But for now, let's concentrate on this beautiful jack in the pulpit. The metal blades are called jacks. And of course, we want the piece to separate from the blow pipe eventually, so fast Foster's making a lie. There'll be no bad, bad vibrations today. Don't worry about that. <laughs> if there are, it's because we'll be playing the Beach Boys in the background. Okay, he's cutting the bottom on the end of it, and that is uh, a button on the end of it. He's cutting at the bottom, and that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to be the platform for the foot that gets attached, and it's also going to give him a point to pull from as he extends the stem. He increased the diameter of the piece. Now he's going to heat it up and then he'll probably spin it out a little bit using that uh, patented propeller move. Did you ever have a hat with a propeller like Beanie and Cecil Foster? Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe as, as a kid I did. <laughs> not, not since I started blowing glass. Though. Here he goes with his propeller move. The Beanie and Cecil of glass blowing. Okay, so now you can see that lengthened the piece. He's going to reinforce the jack line at the top so we get a good break there. And now watch how he uses the blades to pull out. He's not squeezing hard. He's not making it a lot smaller in diameter. He's using that button to pull against. He'll get his calipers to check the length. If he needs any more, he'll pull it. But here comes his paper pegs, which is a sure sign that he's got what he wants. They steal less heat than the uh, metal blades of the jacks. And it's also a signal to Josh that it's time to step in, take the piece for a flash while Foster gathers for the foot. So there's the handoff to Josh, and he'll go back over for the flash heats. He only puts it in the glory hole for a few seconds at a time. He's trying to keep the temperature well above a thousand degrees. If we get down below that, or especially in a range of 900, the piece tends to crack and break. 
So his job is to every few seconds give it a short flash, establish a nice core of heat, and then here comes Foster with the glass for the foot. Foster is going to pass behind Josh who will immediately turn toward the bench. Foster will cut a jack line into the glass. This is to help it flow off the pipe. Josh raises it to vertical. I'll be Cecil, David. And there we go. Actually, I'll be Puff the Magic Dragon. Okay, there we go. He cuts that off. Josh keeps the piece centered so the glass doesn't droop. Foster pats the glass flat and now pinches the glass between the two blades of the footboard. There are notches cut in the one side of the footboard, and that's what surrounds the stem. And now you can kind of see the function of that button that he cut as a landing pad and a transition into the foot from the stem. Okay, howdy Jay, nice to have you with us. And Renee, happy Tuesday to you too. Okie doke. So we're getting them in there. Hey, they're excited about Valentine's Day, and who wouldn't be? All right, Foster's reheating now because he's going to need to shape the foot a little bit. He's got it thinned out with the uh, footboards, but now he's going to grab his special carbon paddle. One edge of it is cut square and flat so he can flatten. He turns it over, and you can see the profile that's cut into the carbon, the carbon. So. That gives him that beautiful gentle slope. He'll flatten the bottom a little bit more, and then it'll be once more a handoff to Josh, and off we go for the transfer. Yes, Kristen, it is easy. It's amazing how easy Foster makes it look, and it's from many, many years of experience, and it is quite a bit of talent. Josh is doing the same thing as he did with the piece before adding the foot. He's flashing it. That'll keep it warm. Foster will come over and shake the punty. I'm going to get out from in between them, but I'm going to let you see the attachment here and how Foster gets his alignment. We'll back up a moment while he grabs his file. So he's going to attach it to the center of the foot. Then as he rolls the pipe and pushes down with that file, he gets it centered a scratch on the glass and a tap and it breaks free. So he hasn't put the piece all the way up in there yet. You can see it's still kind of moving around a little bit on the punty joint. But he has to get that upper portion back into the heat right away. The uh, glass that he has at the tip there was cold enough to fracture and break off of the blowpipe so it's absolutely essential that it get it reheated to manipulate. That little move he did just then, bringing the piece out and onto the yoke that he has, that was to help center it. The bunny was a little bit off center in the transit, so he wanted to straighten that out. Does anyone, anybody watch the Netflix glass blowing competition show? Yep, uh, I imagine a lot of people on here uh, have watched the Blown Away, which has uh, started season two. So, uh, did you watch any, Bruce? Have you watched any of Blown Away? I have not watched this season. I prefer to watch. I, I like to uh, watch the whole thing at once. So, what's well, all up? What's that? It's all up. All all the episodes are up. Yeah, oh, I thought they it. were just doing one at a time. No, I no, had not paid any all. attention. Okay, so looks like I can binge watch tonight. For some time. All right, so now Foster has got the heat concentrated in the tip or the lip. You can see the orange glow up there. And then he comes with the steam cone. Another piece of wood soaked in water in contact with hot glass creates steam. And just like the little engine that could, the inflation causes the motion. There we go. Hey, that's the basic principle of a steam engine. And for those of you from the UK, Hats off to James Watt. Okay, so anyway, what was that? <laughs> oh, man. Too much coffee this morning. Okay, so Foster has inflated a little bit. He's going to need a little bit more inflation there to get things going. Okay, Marion, welcome. 
Right now he's just making sure that it's all centered up with the central axis of the piece. That's why he's using the paddle on the back side by the foot. So, just uh, small details like that make a huge difference. The paper pegs keep from stealing the heat. And he's going to go reheat now. So that trip to the bench was basically just to get everything centered and in a nice straight line. Uh, I happen to believe that with glass blowing, keeping the glass centered is probably the most difficult skill. Definitely harder than blowing. When the glass is hot, uh, most anybody can blow glass. But uh, getting folks to learn to center the glass is really difficult. And if you think of centering as an even distribution of the material around the central axis of the piece, that's what we try to do. Oh, wow, Jen Johnson watched all of them last night, all the shows. Okay, here we go with more heat in the top, and now Foster's going to give us some more inflation. Have you talked to Janet Yellen, the new secretary treasurer, about this inflation business, Foster? Okay, here we go. He's going to open the lid. Good one, Bruce. Michael Herman, welcome aboard. Hey! Everybody say hi, hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Let's give Michael a quick view of Theta. He hasn't seen her in a while. Say hello, Michael. Hey, Michael. There we go. And if you, the rest of you are wondering why we go nuts when Michael checks in, it's because he worked with us here for many years, and we have very pleasant memories. Okay, Foster has inflated the top of this piece now, and he's opened it up a little bit with the jacks. He'll come back in a moment, and he'll start to fold the lip outward and then cut a little line behind it. And I'll take you over to the display table here in a moment. I'm thinking he's going to be coming back in just a moment to start the jack work, and we don't want to miss that. Hello, Kate. Hello, David. Yeah. Oh, and Colin says it's his tea break. Wonderful. Okay, so now you'll see Foster take the jack blades and he folds the lip downward. He's working on the lower side. Then the jacks straddle the glass and create a constriction. So this smaller aperture is what will be used as a flower base. He'll probably get a little more heat and flatten that lip. And while he does that, we'll give you a, a view of what's coming on this piece. So. This is a long stem jack in the pulpit right here. This entire area is what's now flattened perpendicular to the piece. One side of a disc will be flattened toward the body. The other side will be flattened upward and then pulled with the tweezers or pincers. So it might take a couple of heats to do that, but we'll take a look because here he comes back to the bench. All right, so the first thing he's going to do is flatten that edge. It got a little bit rippled because of the extreme heat. And here he goes with the fold upward and a fold downward to make contact with the body. And then he'll take it back to the glory hole and reheat. He's got his pincers or tweezers in hand. He'll flash the whole piece. Where does the name Jack in the Pulpit come from? Uh, it's a flower, and this is supposed to mimic that general shape. Okay, so now he's heating the upper portion of the piece, and that little bit that he folded upward is going to be the hottest. He'll grab it with his tweezers and pull gently. When you pull glass, you pull it kind of gently at first because you don't want it to string out too much. And he accidentally tapped it, and there it is. Yeah. Okay. So hey, it's a, it it's happens. A jack in the pulpit floor model. Okay, the floor model. Okay. Special discounts. All righty. <laughs> so, so here's what the jack in the pulpits look like. But if you'd like to see one made to its completion, check in on our YouTube ta channel. Oh no, not the horror, Matthew. It happens. Okay, that's part of glass blowing. But just about 30 minutes ago, Foster made a perfect one. It's in the annealer right now. And what we've been doing is a very short YouTube presentation on YouTube Live 
a half hour before we start this. Uh, sort of an uh, aperitif, if you will, something to stimulate your appetite before the real show. So anyway, uh, check out the YouTube channel for Art of Fire, and you'll see the piece made in its entirety. And these are a couple more right here. And you can see how with a rose in it, it would make a perfect Valentine's gift. All right, so uh, remember to comment. If you comment, that's how you get entered in the drawings. And people commented on this beautiful trumpet vase here. And Joanna Rudnicka uh, was the winner last week, so it'll be on the way to the UK. And thank you all for commenting. And this piece in front of it, this aqua long uh, classic champagne flute, is up for drawing for next week. So that's what we've got as far as the giveaways. And you get into drawing by commenting. We'd really like it if you'll share the videos, because the more people you share with, the more viewership we get. And, of course, we enjoy it when you like us because, hey, just like Sally feels, you like us. We love it. If you're interested in giving someone some glass for Valentine's Day, might we suggest a gift certificate? We can actually, with the magic of email, get one of these to you without having to put a postage stamp on it. And you can take care of it and let whomever in your life you wish to have a beautiful piece of glass pick their own. Speaking of picking their own, you could go on to our website, artifire.com. Uh, we have a whole selection of pieces there, and we'd be glad to do any custom work that you want. Okay. And, uh, oh, well, thank you, guys. Uh, Jeanette and Lynn and Liz appreciate all the comments, okay? So we've got the gift certificates, and uh, you can go online, artofire.com, or even call us at 301-253-6642. And uh, I believe we're going to be going to the basket next. Okay, so we don't have a sample of a basket here to show you, but Todd is going to be making a multicolored flat basket. So uh, while we're here cake plate, especially with the sweet treats, is a wonderful gift. Here's a mosaic bowl, a, a Murini bowl that Todd made a few weeks ago. We've got the Jack in the Pulpits. Of course, if you're using uh, any champagne or Asti, any other such sparkling beverages for your Valentine's celebration, you might want a brand new pair of flutes. And who could pass up the chance to have a beautiful vase to put flowers in? This one happens to be the three-trail vase that Foster made last week. If you were with us last week, you might recognize the black and the white reticello that Todd did, uh, Josh did. And here are some blown hearts. And those you'll see at the end of today's show. And these are pieces where the shape is almost made entirely in the mold. So uh, there's our di that's our difference we talk about between uh, optic mold that creates optical impressions and a mold used to shape the piece. All right, so. A couple more Fiesta bowls. Here. Uh, baskets. Those that? are the baskets. Those yeah. are the baskets. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's a good thing they brought something out of stock to show me because Todd also makes a beautiful square basket, which looks like a overgrown purse. So, uh, which are we getting today? The are baskets these? like these? Yes, okay, so correct. here are the yeah. basket pieces, and Todd's got, uh, actually he's got a custom order for this. So this is the type of thing you're going to see today, and we'll check in with Todd here, and perhaps find out what kind of colors we got. What kind of colors are these, Todd? Multi-color? Uh, it's a multi-color. It's a, uh, I called it kind of a springtime multi. It's pinks and greens and golds. Okay. There's no blue or purple in it. Uh, probably one of like the second or third color mixes I ever kind of tinkered with. But we're going to do a uh, background of white on the next gather. Then we'll pick up uh, some more clear over that, and then put this multicolor green tea. Oh, okay. Combination. There's the special mix of the multicolor frit. All right. That'll be on the most outer surface. And then we're going to do some things to treat it with uh, some 
off the goals and that sort of thing, and uh, that'll give it a little more attention. Okay, All wonderful. Right. So he's getting ready to go gather. Some of you have asked us in the past if the irons or pipes get hot. We have this little trough of water here. Should the pipe get a little bit warm to the touch, we'll use this to cool it. And it's usually not the case that the glass gets, uh, the pipe gets too hot to even touch. We like to have it cool up very close to the glass so that we can grab closer to the glass on the blowpipe to get better leverage. If we have to hold it back in the handle area, it's a lot harder to control. So now he's got his second gather of glass. This white glass is called Frit. It's granular glass when the manufacturers make their pot full of white glass. Some of it they sell as bar stock rolled into long tubes of solid glass. And some of it they grind up and we can get different grinds. As soon as he's done with this gather, We'll come over a little bit closer. That's very hot still, but you can kind of get an idea of how fine a grain that is. However, his mixture of the multiple colors is a lot bigger grain. So we can buy these in a variety of sizes depending on the application. So we get the frit from other places. We've got the, it will be hard to pick what I would get. How about one of each? I love your thought process there, Susan. Okay, so he's taking another gather through the white, another uh, coating. It's still the same gather of glass he had. Right now, he wants to make sure that, that there's plenty of white on that. As he blows the piece out and stretches it out, the little pieces of frit will move further and further apart. And if there's not enough coverage on it, you could actually see between them. So we get a plenty dense coverage. That's another reason for using the very fine frit on this, because it gives us a dense coverage where it almost looks like it's solid color. There he goes with the white. Okay. Done with that and swept out of the way, so it's time to get that all stabilized and shaped. You want me to say stuff while I'm doing it, or do you want to just do all the... Uh, What's that? Do you want me to throw in little bits of info? Throw, throw anything you want at us. <laughs> anything I come to Anything you want. All right. Once was a glass blower from Nantucket. <laughs> So he's got that gas glass gathered up now and he's going to use the marver to shape and chill it gently. If he, good morning Rachel and good morning Antoinette, what are you making? Well I could use the answer that Foster gives and say glass, but that would be a little bit disrespectful. Now I'm teasing. Todd is making a basket piece glass. as opposed to being a basket case. So. He's going to marver this out, inflate it a little bit, and we'll show you a sample of what he's making. It's like okay. a two for I can be a basket case and make a basket case. Uh -huh. It's probably more than one of the exception. All right. So that's our background. It's our... Uh, canvas, if you will, that we're going to put these colors on, because these colors are all transparent. Um, it's nice to have a white background so that the light coming in bounces back out and through. You can get some really interesting patterns with just transparent work as well, um, but we're not going to do that with this one. Okay. moving the glass around a little bit in the bowl to get it into the position he wants. He's going to let that cool. And so some of you joined us just a moment ago, and I'll show you what the basket piece looks like that he's making. So these are examples of what Todd is about to make. You can see the white interior, and the transparent colors are really vibrant because the light goes through the transparent color, reflects back off the white, 
and to your eye. Todd has now gathered from the furnace with the next uh, bit of clear glass and he'll come on over and start picking up the frit. Is this a Neil Simon themed day? Well, I was going to ask if we, couldn't, couldn't we call this Ritz instead of Fritz? And then we could be putting on the Ritz. Oh, oh. If you're going to do putting on the Ritz, you got to do it like. Uh, yeah, Frankenstein. Yep, you got. Uh, oh, we got. We got it. We, I can get. I can get. There's a trivia question. I can get it as far as they go for go for. Okay. So. The, What's the actor's name? That's the trivia question. That played Ray Romano's father. Oh, that's our trivia question for the day. Yep. And he played the monster in Young Frankenstein. By Mel Brooks. Somebody answer us. Okay. So, Todd's got his color picked up now, and it's time to start. Peter Boyle, that's right, Bill O'Donnell, wonderful. And we got Barbara Spitzer coming in with Peter Boyle. Okie doke, yep. <laughs> All right, now we can move on to the next bit of trivia. Okay. Let's show you the brains locked up around this time. So after getting the frit picked up, Todd's going to take those little dots of color and stretch them into lines. And the way he's going to do that is turning the pipe in one direction while he's on the marvel. Notice he's turning clockwise as opposed to Wittershins. Maybe. Maybe yeah. Normal. It's, oh, it's a uh, young Frank. It's a Mel Brooks day. It's a Mel Brooks kind of day. You can see the twist yes. starting to appear, and that's because the friction of the glass against the tabletop causes the glass to twist on that outer layer. And he'll begin to get most of that done. At some point, he'll probably put it down into the tall mold over here and use the ridges of the mold against the glass to cause it to twist. So by turning the glass in one direction, here we go in the mold. You may hear a little squeaking. It actually grabs against those fins and twists the glass even further. It wants to get a lot of nice long lines in this. And there we go. Look at that. All right. So that's a really quick way to do it. He could have done the whole thing on the Marver, but it would have taken several more trips to do. So now he's going to work at marvering it, cooling it, getting it shaped for the next step. Which is going to be to go into this optic mold here but without twisting it. He'll blow into that, it will put ridges into it, and then he'll twist those to get what we call a really good fishnet pattern. So now he's got pretty much vertical lines running around the piece. And by putting it into the optic mold and making horizontal ridges in a moment, he'll be able to get that to go. He took a quick check a moment ago to make sure it would go in there. And he's just marvering this down for a little more reduction in the diameter. Welcome aboard, Barbara. We're in the process of, or uh, well, Todd's in the process, of making us a basket. When he goes for this reheat, I'll show you all another sample, a look at what it is he's making. So, this over here with the kind of curly pattern in it, this fishnet type pattern, is what he's making. That's a basket shape. So by twisting in the large fin mold, he created the striations. Now he's going, but he was not blowing. Now he's going to actually blow into the optic mold and the outward pressure of the glass against the sides of the mold will form the ridges. This is how they make Ruffles potato chips. Oh, 
All right, and there you go. All righty, so now he's got those, but they're forming lines along the central axis of the piece. So what he'll do next is twist those up. Remember to comment, share, like. Your comments get you entered in the drawing for a free piece. And last week's free piece went to Joanna Rudecka. And it's going all the way to London in the UK. And you can get an aqua champagne flute. That's our drawing for next week if you keep commenting. Ah, here's a good one. I made the comment about Ruffles potato chips. And Barbara comes back with, bet you can't eat just one. Ooh, boy, I love this crowd. <laughs> All right, so Todd is working now on twisting those lines, getting us the beautiful fishnet pattern in the color. You can see the motion in the glass there. There's the twist to everything. All right. See that glass moving all around? That's because of the extreme heat that's still up in the in the neck of it. Extreme. To, uh, More than words? Random. Manic. Extreme? Extreme. Just the way I said it. <laughs> and he fooled me. He, he, did, he didn't put the twist in the, uh, the optic ridges. Not on this one. Okay. The other pieces had that, but hey, this is a custom order for someone who wants it done specifically. Alrighty. So our theme today is creating Valentine's gift. And a beautiful basket piece like this would be perfect for it. Now, as would any of the other pieces we have on display. We'll get back to that in a moment. David Hogan says, nice tune, Todd. <laughs> That's right. So while Todd is working on this, what shenanigans is Josh up to? Well, Josh is standing by making fun of both of us in case <laughs> I misspeak or Todd has something untoward happen Absolutely. with the glass. Fortunately, we're on to his game. That's from Bill O'Donnell. That's what I do best, just standing around. <laughs> Causing trouble. That's right. Okay. Uh, Josh will be making a couple pieces in a few moments. Uh, one of them you'll be really fascinated with is the uh, cake plate. It's a really beautiful piece. Right now, Todd's going to lengthen the glass. Notice we all took a step back. Now, the glass does not come off of the blowpipe like that unless you've really made a serious error. Okay. You gotta make it happen. By using the wet newspaper, and chilling the bottom. Right now he's checking the height with the calipers, and also the diameter. When he has that to where he wants, then they'll go for the flattening and the transfer. For right now, it looks like he's going to use the blow hose to increase, well, maybe not. So what's Bill been up to? Bill O'Donnell, what you been up to? Bill was in a class with us Jeez, Bruce, how many years ago? It's been a little while. Yeah. Been a while. Yeah, I taught a class up in Corning at the studio, and uh, Josh was there with me. And we had Bill O'Donnell in the class, and it's nice to have you dropping in on us now. So Jeff Todd is going to use the blow hose, but he needed a little moment to take the knots out of it. Somebody sneaks in the studio at night and ties knots in our blow hoses. <laughs> and uh, when we find out who they are, they're in trouble. Okay, so now he's going to reheat the piece. Curse you in for me. <laughs> there is no solution. It's going to be work. 
great to hear, Bill. Bill says he's been uh, making some Murini blocks. Oh, nice. He's got a Firefly kiln. Great to hear it. Are you still around Philly, Bill? Okay. At some point, he'll swing by and we can make out some Murini slices. Wonderful. Nice. Wonderful. Okay, so Todd's able to hold the bottom of the piece in with the wet newspaper while he blows into the blow hose and increases the diameter. And if David McDermott was here, we'd be making noise when he puts that on there. Uh, David McDermott is another glass blower we know from up in Massachusetts, and his thing was you should hear the calipers touch the side of the glass or else you didn't make it right. Alrighty, glass ghost, yes, not elves, yes. And, and in fact, they might be the Keebler, oh, no, no, Keebler right. elves from Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> All right, let's see how far we can take that. Todd says, let's not, I'm working. Okay, Bill's in North Jersey. Yeah. Right. Philly, close enough. Yeah. Okay. So it's important to get this diameter like he wants, and he'll get the length. So Josh right now is going to add what we call a cheater bit, or a little button of glass on the bottom, so it doesn't pull off any frit when we remove the punty later. Todd will place the glass into the center, pour the pipe, and the glass just burns itself right off. Now by using the blade of the hinge of the jack, he pushes that down into a bit of a cone, and in a moment, he'll flatten the bottom. Lynn Byer says we did not go, not, K-N-O-T, not far enough. <laughs> All right. A punty patch. That's probably a little more delicate name than a cheater. But I don't know. We'll be going with cheater. Maurice? Yeah, Maurice. Wow, buttons and axes. Yeah, it is amazing, okay? So he's, he's getting that shaped up, and they're going to get the bottom flat because we don't want this basket rolling off the table. Bill says it's only cheating if folks can tell. There you go. Oh, okay. My adult son has said since he was a teenager, it's not a lie if I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he heard that on Seinfeld or something at one point, but we'll, we'll let that fly. Okay, so Todd now is working in peace. Paddle on now, getting the shape and then flattening the bottom. Josh is getting started over here on making the punty. Notice there's only a little bit of glass off the end of that pipe. We don't want a really long punty on here because if it got hot, it'd be like a long finger just like wiggling around and it would be really difficult to control. Let's get a close up of that. Yeah, so you can see there's not much glass off the end of that pipe. Todd is again, how heavy is that piece? About three, four pounds? I'd say four pounds. Four pounds? Good morning, Jerry. Good to see you. Ah, okay, with root. Okay, very good. Here comes Todd with flattening the bottom a little bit more. Notice it goes on at an angle with the paddle first. That's so as to not collapse the entire profile at the bottom. And once he gets that little button pressed in a little bit. We'll go for the transfer. the 
bottom so that when the puppy comes off, that that glass is not exposed to a tabletop or anything. Okay, so Josh has signaled that he's ready for the transfer, a little water on the neck, and off it comes, just as easy as you please. Now the, the uh, transfer is a very exciting part, but we'd really like to make them as dull and boring as possible. We don't, don't like to have exciting transfers. So, as with most other pieces, that uh, end was cold enough to fracture, it takes a while to reheat. And while Todd is reheating it, Josh is going to go pick up a bit of color. We got black for this. What color is the lip wrap, Todd? Dark teal. Dark teal, okay. Josh is getting that out of the annealer over there on the end of a small iron. He's going to come over to this other glory hole and heat that up and melt it and get it shaped to apply to the lip of the vessel. In the meantime, Todd's over here continuing to reheat that lip. You can see all that bright orange color indicative of heat. He'll open it just a little bit. Give it the shaping he wants. And it keeps that diameter relatively small so that the lip wrap doesn't have a long way to go around the entire circumference. Where he, if he opened that up to about five or six inches, it'd be very difficult to control the glass on the lip wrap, and it would also take a heck of a lot of it. How much time do you need, Josh? Uh, probably 20 seconds. Okay. So, you heard Todd asking Josh how much time he needs. That's uh, Todd, Josh's estimation of how long till the lip wrap gets hot, hot enough to stick. So Todd could come back to the bench right now, get himself settled in, the piece turning and chill the sides just a little bit. And then Josh will bring the feet the uh, glass from about a 45 degree angle behind. Todd makes a contact and turns slowly down the bench as the glass drapes on for another beautiful lip wrap. And then by casting it away, it burns itself free. So that's how we get the lip wrap on there. So now all those elements are in place, it's going to be time here in just a moment to start opening the vessel. So Josh has two paddles. He thinks he works at an airport and is directing airplanes, but they use flashlights, Josh. Uh, more like okay. a, a ninja. Uh, okay. Right now he's going to use one paddle to shield Todd's arm from the extreme heat, and the other paddle goes onto the lip of the vessel to flatten it. There we go. No, he didn't go around twice with it. He went a little bit past one full turn just to get the coverage, Antoinette. And for those of you that just recently joined us, this is the type of piece that he's making, the basket with this beautiful design in it, and you can see the lip wraps on those two. So now that Todd has opened that up a little bit, he'll continue the opening until he gets it wide open at the top, just like the other. Again, Josh brings a paddle in to protect his forearm, and paddles the lip for him to keep that nice and flat. Josh has brought him over the wooden jacks. Uh, they have wood blades and uh, they steal a lot less heat. Plus, they're a much larger diameter than the metal blades. So you can open it, you don't scratch the surfaces. It gives you a little more opening power. Yep, that's what the bar trophy's for, Bill. This piece is big enough to require them, believe me. Okay, so. By using the part trophy at an angle like that, he can open it deeper. You'll notice that the diameter of the lip is not increasing nearly as much as the glass that's about four inches past the lip. And that's by design.
Uh, that's true, Antoinette. As far as the Kevlar sleeve, it's just uh, personal preference. And uh, we have some uh, gym socks with the holes cut out of them that we sometimes put on our forearm. But really having somebody block the heat with the wooden paddle works very, very well. All right, so now we got a little more opening to do. We take this a little bit at a time. Notice the extreme upward angle of the jacks that he started with, and that's what opens it deeper into peace. If he started with the jacks horizontal and began to lift, then he would just open the lift mainly, and he wouldn't have that beautiful profile. All right. Check this was a custom order. got the insulated gloves on. Todd will tap the pipe after applying a little water to the punting. We get a free break of it right there. And off we go into the annealer. And that is by far the longest part of the glass blowing process. Turning it over just for safety. Okay. And we're warming it up. Okay. So, let's hear it for Todd. Come on. How about some, some heart? Hey! Flowers, thumbs up. We're coming up on Valentine's Day. Show the love. Okay, so here we are back over at our display table, and I'll veer off to the left a little bit. There's the basket. So that was a special order. So if you'd like a special order piece, just contact us. You can uh, you can contact us at artofire.com. Go into our catalog, pick any of the pieces in there you see that you may want. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, this is our display table today, our theme being creating Valentine's Day gifts. And so what you just saw was the basket a little bit earlier. You saw the jack in the pulpit, a little uh, single flowered stem vase. And uh, we also did one about, oh, a half hour before this broadcast started on our YouTube channel. So check us out over there too to see a little bit of glass blowing. And uh, if you're going to enjoy some spirits on Valentine's Day, you might want a brand new pair of champagne flutes like those right there. Here's another pair. And for those of you commenting, this one at the front, this aqua color, is the giveaway piece this week. Tapped in behind it is the giveaway from last week. Joanna Rudnicka got that. So it'll be on its way to London. And yes, that's the UK, not Kentucky, in just a few days. So thank you, Joanna, for being with us. And she's been here, I think, just about every week. Okay, so that's what we've got there. And then coming up in just a few moments is going to be a cake dish. And we won't be making the little uh, snacks on top, okay? Uh, yes, Jerry, the uh, black and white reticello is still here, okay? If anybody wants to purchase it, get in touch with Theta. We'll come in a little bit closer to see if you can spot the bubbles. And it's a little hard with the reflected light. But if we get just the right angle on a couple of these, you can see the little bubbles trapped between the caves. And this piece here is what's going to be coming next. It won't be in these colors. If you'd like this one or the one that's about to be made, just let us know. You can purchase it. One of the interesting things about this one is it has a stem and foot that is pulled from the body of the piece. I believe Josh is going to make a slightly different one when he does that in a few moments. Also, if you're giving flowers, why not get a vase, okay? And this particular vase here, the uh, three trail, beautiful color here, the peacock colors, is what Foster made last week. And it really does look nice with the flowers in it. So, uh, up here we've got the hearts. You'll see that made in a few more minutes. And actually, if I look over here, I see we've just had something added to the list. Because Robin ordered up a pink bunny, which I think is great. 
and uh, so we'll be making that too. If you have uh, custom orders you'd like made, if you let us know in advance, and especially, we'll be able to make it right on the live stream while you watch. So uh, there we go. So next up is going to be the cake dish. And I believe that Josh is going to be making this with blue and white. Might mention also, if you'd like one of the t-shirts like we all wear around here, those are for available for sale too. All right, let's go back here and see what Josh is up to. I'm sure it's no good. <laughs> what colors are you using, Josh? Uh, we're going to do cobalt fishnet with a white background. Okay, a cobalt fishnet with a white background. Beautiful. Ah, Robin Dewey says that she's ordered the pink bunny for her mom, and her mom has a peep obsession. I know somebody with a peep obsession too. Joyce, are you watching? My wife loves peeps. We have had whole collections of peeps. We haven't done any dioramas yet, but someday. Okay, so Josh is picking up the blue frit. He'll get this covered up. What's the glass blower saying? Make it big. If you can't make it big, make it blue. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joanna, this is the third time she said, love that color. But what I really love is the way she spells color with the O-U-R from the UK. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, that is, that is slick. Okay, so uh, that it for your blue pickup, Josh, or going again? No, that's good for the blue. Now I'm ready for the, the optic. Into the optic bowl and a lot of air pressure. And that puts the ridges in it. And then the way we'll get the fish net is to twist that. By leaving the iron in one spot, or nearly one spot, but turning in only one direction, you see the twists appearing. Now the glass near the pipe twists the most, get a real tight twist in that, it's a little harder to get the twist in the outboard section. So have you, uh, have you taken Joyce to the peep show? There's a... Oh, that's a loaded question. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So in Carroll County every year they do a peep show around Easter. Uh, okay. And uh, they design, you know, using the marshmallow peeps. Yes. <laughs> and you can enter into the contest. I, I can't wait to see where David Hogan goes That's through right. that. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> now, actually, uh, when our son got married, we presented her with an entire platter of peeps. No cannon. Oh yeah. Yeah, the lady loves her peeps. Okay. When Josh went back to the bench that time and grabbed the end of the glass with the uh, jacks. Oh, Joyce says, thanks, Josh. She is watching. <laughs> Joyce, do you want to go to the peep show this year? <laughs> Okay, and here we go with some more twist in a moment because it's the double twist that does it. Cindy says she was bummed when the post stopped doing their diorama contest. Me too. People were really inventive with those little marshmallows. And they have a half-life of a million years. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so now he's twisting. And which direction are you twisting now? Winter? Winter's Winter yes. yes. He went the first time clockwise, and the second time 
your choice, anti-clockwise, Witter shins, or if it's really too much to deal with, counterclockwise. And you can see how the two directions of twist are overlapping in there. So remember to uh, comment. Comment will get you entered in the drawing. Share. You share these videos with other folks. We get known far and wide. Of course, if they hear us inviting people to peep shows, they might not want to come back. But it was perfectly innocent. And also like. We all feel good when you like us. Alrighty. We have gift certificates available. You can buy shirts. And in case you want one of these stylish shirts like Josh, Todd, Foster, and I are wearing. And we'll do custom orders. Uh, that last piece that Todd did was a custom order. And we're going to be doing another, and we're custom, be doing order. another custom order in just a few moments or a few minutes when we do the Pink Bunny. Be sure to comment. That's what's going to get you entered in a contest to get the uh, Aqua Champagne Flute. So now Josh has heated the glass up and he's coating the back of that pattern with white. So not only do we make pieces upside down, not literally, that's figuratively, but we start and make the bottom of a piece first and then finish out the top. In this case, we're going to think of looking from inside out. Were you inside that bubble, you would still see that blue pattern, that fishnet pattern, and the white would be the background. So imagine this eventually put onto a punty and opened up and flared out. The white will be on the bottom of the plate. The blue, which is on the inside of the bubble right now, would be exposed and brought out to the top surface of the cake plate. There's going to get a lot of white on here to make a really nice background to look through. And you'll see that blue again in its prominence when he opens the plate up all the way. Thank you, Jonathan. We appreciate that. Jonathan said it is always amazing what we do. Thank you. We're quite often amazed at what we do. All right. You see that's a really thick white coat on it. Now, uh, a couple weeks ago, you saw him make a ginger jar where you use different layers of frit and some of the colors move and push more. As he applies heat to this white and comes out, you'll begin to see a faint amount of the blue coming through. But you're not going to see the real true blue color until he gets done. Right now, he's going to use the block, just as you've seen before, a slightly larger one because it's a little larger piece of glass. This stabilizes the outside edge, puts a shape on it, and keeps it from bouncing around so much. It lets it cool just a little and then blows. By trapping the air in the blowpipe, it's forced out in. And you can actually see the blue pattern below the white. That's where the white has fallen in the creases. Do another piece of paper? Uh, no, let's go with it. Okay. Live dangerously. Yeah, okay. So I asked him if he wanted another piece of paper because this one's got a portion of it missing and it's kind of unfolded. But he's going to need this paper to shape the glass. So we'll put a little water on it because it does get very, very stiff when it's just sitting around for a couple of days without being used. Yeah. Okay. All right, so next will be a gather over this to give us a little more body to work with. And uh, Josh is going to actually push the glass off of this to form the stem, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So that's what he'll use the newspaper for at some point, probably very soon in the process. He's pointing the pipe downward to let some glass trail off. He's got a good sized gather on there. But now watch how he works this with the newspaper. By grabbing it up close to the pipe and pushing his hand toward the tip of the piece, he's forcing the clear glass off the end. 
I'm afraid it's probably a little too bright for you to see the differentiation between the color area and the clear glass. But right there where he's narrowing it, it's all clear glass at the bottom. He's pinching that glass with his uh, thumb and finger, and that's what's creating the constriction. Now his jacks will begin to get the neckline in. If he needs a little more heat there, he'll go back to the glory hole, but he's actually cutting a nice jack line in there and has the tapered shape of the foot. And it's starting to cool, and I'm pulling this back a little bit so you can now see where the clear glass comes down from the white gather and forms the stem. Yes, Jerry, yeah, his, his jacks did need some wax. That was that sound. <laughs> Yeah, just paper. Nice. Jerry from uh, Holland said, wax the jacks. I know, right? <laughs> right now he's blowing and that's inflating the gather a little bit. All right, this, this, this squeaky wheel gets waxed. So the tricky part is now I have this long finger of glass and I'm trying to keep that center while blowing out the top. So that long stem there, as you can see it flexing, is going to be a really difficult thing to pull off, but uh, he does it very well. And what he'll be able to do using the blow hose, it's going to be a cake plate, Rachel. What he'll be able to do is blow at the same time he has a hand tool, in this case the paper, to hold the stem in line with the piece, not get it too wobbly, keep it centered, and you can see the upper part inflating. So by holding it like that, he keeps the air bubble from going any further, and he's getting a much larger diameter into what will eventually become the cake plate. When he's done with that to his satisfaction, he and Todd will work on uh, putting a foot on it, and then after the foot will be a transfer to a punny and opening up the cake plate. Yeah, David Hogan calls that the flying fickle finger of fate. That's a good one. Okay, so now he's going to reinforce that jack line a little bit. And you'll notice that stem is wobbly, but he'll pay attention to that as he's finished the neck. You saw a little pause in his rotation. That's so that he can let it fall back to center. now he's got it all lined up again. Now it's going to be a matter of keeping things warm. Todd is forming the blown foot. You hear Josh talking to Todd, telling him, you know, about the timing and whatnot. So Todd's going for a quick reheat of the foot. Josh has enough heat in the piece that it's not going to crack. Yes, it does look almost cartoonish at this phase, but Todd's going to bring this over. Josh will ask him to blow when he makes contact. That inflates the foot a little bit. Josh lifts it and cuts. Now, that bubble that's on the end is what will become the foot. Josh will give the whole thing a flash, putting a foot on a finger. Yes, David, that's kind of what it is. Okay, so he's going to heat that up so that he can 
cut the end of that bubble off and have it open and then he will open that up with the jacks. He wants to keep everything nicely centered. So he makes a small jack line right here. Then Todd will come over and when Josh is ready, he'll tap that smaller bubble that's right at the tip. Okay, Josh will hold it in place, Todd taps, and off comes the end. So now there's a tiny hole in the very bottom, okay? Josh is going to go flash the entire piece, heat it up, and then he'll get some heat into that foot area. He'll use the sofietta, sometimes called a puffer in this case, to put it right into the opening of that foot and inflate it a little bit. Then he'll use his jacks to begin opening. Yeah, Cindy, it is kind of amazing that the glass is so fluid and that you can actually cut it. And sometimes you have to actually wait for the glass to cool a little bit before you try to break it off. Because if it's too hot, it just kind of mushes around. So now the Sofietta into the opening, watch the foot inflate. You get a little bit larger diameter there. He's going to take a flash. Todd's going to put the jacks back on the bench. You're going to do a folded foot? Yeah, I'll do a folded limb. Okay, so. so you've seen Foster do spun feet, you know, where he uses the two foot boards. So this is just a little different way of doing feet. I just wanted to show you folks. So he's going to fold the lip on that foot to give it a little extra layer of glass at the point it contacts the table. So we'll watch him do that here in just a moment. Back to the bench he comes. And by pushing in and down, you can see a double thickness forming right in that last quarter inch. He'll start to work on the profile. You can see it's wobbly because of the heat, but they'll take care of that. So right now, back for a little more heat. The key here is not to overheat it, and it's just really the Goldilocks art. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And so if the glass is a little too hot when he's trying to manipulate it, difficult to control, you just pause for a moment. If it's too cold, you go back and reheat. So now that he's got the foot flared out some, he'll start using the jacks to shape. And when he wants, he'll ask Todd to put the paddle on and get a nice contour to that. Okay, so there we've got the foot with the folded uh, lip on it. And that will give a little extra strength to the glass when it's sitting on the tabletop. couple flashes on Josh's part and Todd comes to the barber again just a small amount of glass on the tip of an iron Josh will make sure it's nice and flat now he's accepting the punty seated at the bench this is a little bit different than what Foster did Foster brought the punty himself so what Josh will do is accept the punty from Todd make the placement get the centering done himself, and then they'll break it free. So Todd simply waits till Josh will grab the pipe with his tweezers, and now he'll place it in the center. Now watch his tweezers. The pressure on the top of the pipe allows him to center it in the stem. Once he's got it centered and knows that Todd's got it under control, a little scratch with the tweezers, a tap, and it comes free. And there we go, another successful transfer. You can see that it's wobbling a lot. That's because of the extreme heat and the punty. So Todd just goes in with that for a moment. But just like all the other descriptions, the end of that was cold enough to fracture. It's going to take a while to reheat and bring it back. So you'll see Josh heating primarily the top of the vessel and occasionally flashing the piece by putting the whole thing in the heat.
because of the size and the mass of this glass, he's probably going to take some pretty frequent flashes just to make sure that things keep warm. You also notice he's only in there for a few moments because if he takes a lot of flashes but leaves a great deal of exposure to the heat, the whole thing will get hot and sloppy. Hey, Don, can you grab the part So Todd's bringing the par trophies over for Josh. He'll be using those just as uh, Todd did in the opening. The early stages are going to be to open the lip and get the piece started opening. And we'll eventually come to like a straight sided bowl, which will then be spun out and open. You can see where the heat is in that. And Josh is using the par trophies now. Not only do they steal less heat, they give you a broader surface of contact see how the piece is open. Notice there's still a slope in the upper half of the vessel. That's because he held his jacks up pointed upwards a bit rather than holding them level. And this allows him to lift the whole thing for a nice uniform shape. So uh, Todd is returning the favor and serving as uh, Josh's Kevlar sleeve. He'll shield his arm. And when Josh asks, now Josh is actually pushing toward the bottom of that piece to not only increase the diameter, but to shorten the vessel, make it not stick up as tall. And now you can start to see that beautiful blue design appearing inside with the white background. So by using the parchofi, the wooden jacks, to press toward the pipe as he opens. It creates a lot wider base on it and he won't have near as far to spin it open. If he just opened the lip of it, he'd have a lot of spinning to do to get this to open up. And it'd be a little hard to control. Look in terms of height from the stem to the, bot, the lip of the vessel and you can see but it's getting shorter and shorter. It's looking more and more like a very low dish. Josh is going to keep that going until all he has to do at the very end is heat it and spin it out and it goes nice and flat. So he's going to get ready to open more doors here in a minute. Unless he leaves it with that profile. So here we go. Got Todd holding the door for him. Spin it out now? Yeah. Okay. So here he goes. He's going to heat the whole thing. He's turning at a moderate speed, not real fast. Then he asks Todd to open the doors. So now he opens. He's spinning. The diameter will increase. The centrifugal force forms it into a flat disc. They'll use a paddle or the parchofis in a moment. He's using a paddle to make a really nice flat surface, starting with the center and then working his way out toward the end. And now you can see what a nice edge on that. Beautiful. And since he hasn't maximized the piece to larger than the glory hole, he can give it a quick flash, any final touch-ups, and then come out. I'll answer your question in just a moment, Jessica. There's that beautiful fishnet blue pattern on the top of the plate. We'll come around from behind and watch it flattened and shaped with the paddle. And if we get a real nice side view right here, you can see it's razor thin. All right, a little drop of water into the joint between the punty and the foot. Todd takes it, and off to the annealer we go. Let's hear it for Josh. Let's hear it for Todd and Foster and everybody. Yeah, the assembled masses. Let's hear it for the peep show. Yeah, okay, hey, Foster. What's the diameter of the glory hole? Uh, Biggest. 14. Biggest diameter. Oh, those are 14. Yeah. We 
got another one that's uh, 20. It's what, Josh, the largest? 14 inches. 14. So uh, I think it was, well, I've lost the name because the thing scrolled. Uh, somebody asked about the largest diameter. So really probably about 12 inches. Maybe you could squeeze out yeah. 13. You need a little bit of room on either side of the piece to keep turning in the glory hole. So if we were to make a, say, make a rondelle for you or a cake platter, we could make one larger than 14 inches, but we'd never be able to reheat it after we made it. We would have to spin it out and make sure that we got it right, right away. Yes, hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, well, the post, the pictures will be posted, Cindy. Cindy says she can't wait to see the finished product, and those should be online tomorrow. So there you go with a cake dish. And this is sort of what it looks like. Yeah, Only so, the stem and foot are different. You can right. see that this one is a solid foot. So when Josh took his paper and pushed the stem out so long on that other one, on this one he didn't go as far with it, and he formed a foot. Same deal. This one simply has a teal with uh, cranberry. What's on the background? Uh, it's raspberry. Oh, raspberry. Oh, raspberry. So it's got uh, raspberry backing on it underneath the teal. So that one could be yours. Uh, the one he just made could be yours. Contact you don't get the cupcakes, though. No, no uh-uh. Okie doke. All right, so there's the cake plate. Let's take a quick look at the list and see what's up next. We're going to be going back to Mr. Todd. I believe. Yes, going to do the heart? Gonna, yep, Todd's, Todd's going to do the heart. Okay. And uh, so anyway, he'll be doing that in just a moment. And here are samples of them. A perfect Valentine's Day gift. And we can do them in many different colors. So get in touch with us. Order one. And you can have one for yourself. Those are the hearts right there. You see the uh, Jack in the Pulpit faces right here. Champagne flutes, in case you want a little bit of bubbly on the 14th of February. Johanna Rudnicka won this uh, beautiful flower trumpet face. If comments are in here, we'll get you entered in the drawing to possibly get this aqua champagne flute. We've got beautiful vases for you to give flowers to your loved ones. And if you really want something really special, this black and white reticello piece is a definite conversation starter. So that's uh, one that was made last week right here. And so that's pretty much the story on that. Get a gift certificate from us if you like. Who does the sleeping cats? Todd does the sleeping cats. Um, also, uh, we have a website, artofire.com. You can find a lot more pieces than what we show here online. Here's a, a sample of the basket pieces that Todd just made. Uh, he made one in different colors, but there's our basket piece. And, uh, oh yeah, from last, I guess, it, was it last week? Yeah, last week with the platter. There's the platter with the multicolor pattern inside of it. So all of these, so anything here would make a really great gift. Todd's getting set up for the heart. And uh, what we have is a special wooden mold. And uh, Josh is going to pick it up, open it up for us. So the blowpipe goes down in through here, and the glass is blown out against the mold while the two pieces are held tightly together. So the glass is not turned, it is not rotated, it's simply blown out against that, and that gives us the bulk of the heart shape, okay? And then there's only a little bit of finishing work to do after he's done that. But it does have to be transferred to a punty, and because the heart is typically narrow toward the bottom, let's go over and take a look at a couple. Now you can kind of see why we had the mold maker make the heart upside down in the mold. This is the part that gets blown out in the lower portion of the mold. This is the part that sticks up toward the blowpipe. When it comes out of the mold, that will be straight. And then Todd will apply heat and use his tweezers to curl it around up and he'll do that after he has placed a punty onto the heart and then the hook goes in where the punty comes off so that's where we're headed with it and uh, we'll get started there in just a moment what color is the heart going to be oh here we go 
This is a beautiful mix of, uh, it's uh, a peach color and a cranberry pink. And it comes together to make a really beautiful pink color. So, we'll do that in, uh, in just a moment here. I mentioned before, you may, we may have some folks that uh, haven't been around in a little while. The annealing process is the longest uh, part of the glass blowing process. So uh, the glass sits in these ovens back here overnight. Uh, what's the approximate weight of the heart? I would guess no more than about eight ounces. I don't know for sure. I don't know that we've ever weighed them. Our feed keeps okay. stopping. So uh, I don't know what to tell you about that, Kimberly. We're not getting any indications of that right here. We'll get it checked out. Kimberly says the feed keeps stopping. Huh. Okay. So. I guess there was a question about the foot that I had made for Josh's piece. And this is basically the same process. So uh, the only difference is we're going to add a little color to it. We're going to pick this rose mix. It's cranberry, sand, and pink. It's a really pretty light rose color. We're going to swirl this a little bit and blow it up. Todd will get his uh, colors all selected up here, picked up. Notice again, turning one direction on the marber, the friction against the tabletop causes those single dots of color to stretch out into lines. And that's what gives us that nice striated pattern. It blows the bubble out into it to get started. And another jack line again. This is for a point of separation. Now what we have to do when we use these kind of molds is to make sure that we get the glass pre-shaped to where it will fit in the mold where we want it to. We need to have enough mass of glass in that area where it needs to expand a lot. So that's pretty much what Todd did right there to make the blown foot for my cake dish. Oh, okay. He just had a blown piece and he cut a neckline. Except for it was clear glass. This one has color, but like same exact thing. So some clear glass, blew it out, and cut a neckline. And that's basically the setup for a lot of our pieces. Right now he's flattening it because the mold is wider in one dimension, or the cutout is wider in one dimension than the other. He's going to let a little bit of the water drain out of that. And he'll use his feet, his legs, to angle to hold it together. So he's going to do a little dance for us. Do a little dance? Yeah, do make a little up. <laughs> yeah. Get down tonight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so it'll get plenty of heat in that. Now he's going to drop that through so the pipe extends up through the hole. The pipe is above the hole. The glass is cut with a jack line. And now what he's going to do is blow real hard, and there comes the heart right out of the mold. He's not done yet. There's still a good bit of work to do on this yet. But not a lot, and the shaping of the vessel, or piece, is pretty much done. So now he'll have to putty it up. Once it's on the putty, he'll be able to heat the lower portion, that uh, stem, if you will, and then pull that into the nice curved shape that you see on the heart. So with a much smaller, delicate piece, we don't need as much of a putty, as much of a big piece of glass. We also need that to come off in a few moments. So, Bob puts a little water on it, a droplet, and taps it free. And now we've got the heart shape. Uh, we have that hole at the bottom, and this is going to need to be heated, pulled out, and then curled a little bit. I think it's a good thing on that one. <laughs> 
They are pretty, Cheryl. Just <laughs> but uh, we can we can make lots of these in many many different colors. So uh, don't don't bother with the candy that says "Be Mine." Order a heart for Valentine's Day. You can appreciate it long after the candy is gone. I was going to pull this out for a little bit of length there, and then he's going to pull it to a curve. We're about to get out of hand here. Surgery for the hole in the heart. About to. Yeah, about to. Yeah, this thing got we, we lost it when? August 25th? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now what he's going to do is use yeah, the tweezers, August 25th, right pull it out right. some, and then that will be broken off. And now you can see that beautiful taper down toward the bottom. And now. Now it's time to put a little heat in that and do the final shaping of the bottom of the heart. Perfect. Open heart surgery, yeah. yeah it has like the trickler, uh, mm -hmm. All right, you can see the heat at the tip of the heart there, and that's where the pull's going to come from by gripping his tweezers. Which we conveniently waxed. No. <laughs> Actually, if you get wax on the tree, tweezers, they don't grab. It's very hard to work with. You mean you're not supposed to wax your tweezers? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to dip your jacks in the water. <laughs> but we do anyway. No, we don't. Okay. But pulling that around in the curve, there's a beautiful profile, just like you've seen on the others. We'll take another heat. When he gets done with this manipulation, he'll put the piece into this cradle, tap it off, and then put a hook on it. The delicate putty just broke right off. He'll use the same iron to go over, gather up a little bit of glass on the end of an iron. He'll place that onto the point where the punky was. You'll never know it was there. So how long can you let it sit in that cradle before it'll crack? I don't know. You want to see? <laughs> Let's ask him. Now, he's probably got, oh, a minute or so. We don't waste any time getting the glass back over here and putting it on. We might not always waste it. But we, all <laughs> we also make sure that there's plenty of heat in it before we tap it off. And there he goes, another beautiful heart. All right, let's hear it for Todd. All right, thank you. Okay, and let's hear it for Josh and all the side comments and all the other nonsense <laughs> we're providing today. Ah, hey, this is a fun one. Okay, so let's come on back over here and see what we got. Ah, we're going to have a special request, a custom ordered piece made right before your very eyes, Robin. And that's going to be a bunny in pink, which she has told us is for her mother who is just wild about peeps. And if Joyce Ferguson is still watching, yes, we'll make some peeps for you too. Uh, okay, so there's a heart you just saw made. This is not the same pink color, but you can see how all those steps led to this beautiful creation. We can also do them in uh, other mixes of colors. So whatever floats your boat, fits your imagination, we could probably do that. We've got all kinds of pieces here for Valentine's Day, but let's get Biddy Z on a bunny peep. So Josh is going to make this one. So just a solid pipe, or solid iron, not blowing iron. So he's using a solid iron because this is going to be a sculptural piece. It's uh, not blown, it will not have a hollow center, so he's able then to just gather everything up on this solid iron, and then he's going to go through the frit. What have we got here? White and cranberry? Yeah. Okay. So the white background just kind of makes the cranberry stand out a little bit more. I think you actually talked about that a little bit. 
bit earlier with Todd's basket. Uh huh. Yeah, anytime we put a white color behind the transparent colors, it allows the light to be reflected. Joyce says she'll take the marshmallow variety of peep. She's not interested in glass. Very well. You've said the magic words. Watch out when April comes around. Does she like the chocolate colored ones? Or just Do you like the, did you see? No, we, you know what? They make a, a cookie base one. One that has a cookie base. That's pretty popular That's too. Bad, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, the matte colors or opaque colors or even translucent colors, uh, we can we can do that too. It's uh, it's just a matter in what you choose. Lots of times the uh, pieces too. Uh, we really want a lot of uh, bright colors, eye candy, if you will. And that, that really helps with a lot of the transparent, but uh, the opaques get that same kind of look. And as Theta just responded to you also, uh, they could be sandblasted to give kind of a, a dulled finish, if you would, something that removes the shine from the glass. But uh, most folks, I think, really prefer something that just jumps. But we, we do have customers that have asked us to sandblast pieces, and we do that. Do we have any around in the back or anywhere, Foster, that might be sandblasted? What's that? Sandblasted pieces or partially sandblasted. Somebody would ask a, call, a question about a matte finish and Theta suggested maybe something sandblasted. Right now, Josh has got the uh, cranberry over top of the white. He's going to stretch this out into the shape that he's going to make the buddy from. So it's kind of, if you can think of it as kind of a diamond shape, like two opposing cones as wide as in the middle. Right now, he's trying to guess how far apart he wants the jack lines for the head and the neck. And over that, he'll coat it with clear. Wow, everybody's getting, everybody's getting into this peep thing. Robin, for whom this is being made, says at Christmas they have peppermint ones dipped in dark chocolate. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's a peep world. <laughs> and me, I'm just here hanging with my peeps. Ow. <laughs> Again, with the newspaper to gently shape, the perfect insulator. It's about seven sheets of newspaper folded up into a square and soaked in water. Josh's happens to be missing a couple pieces off the edge, but not enough to transmit the heat into his hand. We get uh, probably a few weeks worth of work out of the newspaper, and then we have to fold up a new one and use. And it also depends on uh, how many different folks come into the studio and work. Some people uh, come in sometimes and leave the paper in the water bucket for a little too long and it all melts into a paper mache type thing. Then we just make a new one. Fortunately, we have lots of newspaper. Okay, so he's got this ball of glass on the end and he's going to gradually shape it and get it into the taper that he wants. In a few moments, he'll be using the jacks, number one, to create a point of separation from the blowpipe. Yes, Robin, we leave the furnace on 24-7, 365. How long does it heat to take from cold? From cold, about 10 days, 8 to 10 days. Actually, when we have a completely cold furnace that's been repaired, we do the initial heat uh, with an incandescent bulb stuck inside the box so that it doesn't heat up too fast. It would help out dry up any mortar that was in there. You can also use a uh, 
what they call a, a hot dog heater, uh, a little wire thing that has an electric current running through it. But you begin at just uh, a very easy temperature and you keep it going up a couple hundred degrees. When you finally light it, you can't even come anywhere close to working temperature. But we'll get back to that in a minute. You'll notice how Josh has created the taper for the body. And this is the point where the bunny's chubby little body will separate from his head. <laughs> and that's going to be the top of his head where his ears get separated. So there we are with the jack lines. Takes three of them. One to separate from the pipe. One to separate the body from the head and the other one, the leftover at the end right there, is what he'll shear and then use to make the ears. So he's got the divisions made and he's going to get ready. So the first step in making the ears is going to be get sufficient heat and then flatten that last ball of glass. Once he flattens that last ball of glass, he'll be able to take some very good sized shears and separate them by cutting right down the center. Yes, Joanna, it, uh, it does take quite a while to reheat. It also takes quite a while for the heat to come down. We can't just kill the heat in the furnace and let it drop from 2,000 degrees to room temperature on its own. Here comes the flattening. That's where the ears will be. He's using the jacks to create just a little tighter line in it. And now he's going to squeeze shear right down the middle. And that's going to separate the two pieces of the ear. Then it'll give it a little more heat and do any final adjustments to that. It also takes about 10 days to take the furnace down from operating temperature. It has a, uh, a specific type of ceramic liner that were we to let the heat drop too suddenly, they would shatter and that'd be the end of that furnace. How many years are we on this furnace? How many years on this furnace? Eight? Ten? I think we're on ten. We're close to it. Okay, so nobody looks forward to rebuilding a furnace, so you take real good care of it when you have to let it come down for maintenance or reheat. Now you can see that the two ears have been separated. Can we put a bow tie on them and make like the tuxedo look? Is this your idea, uh, uh, Bruce, or is this your question? <laughs> I just came up with it. <laughs> Figured, okay. Like I always say, we don't need no idea men around here, Bruce. <laughs> All right, so Todd has a piece of keep flashing it occasionally. Got enough Josh is going piece. to heat the stringer of black glass, and what he'll do is uh, put the eyes on it, the nose. And he's got a bigger black stringer for the tail. So. A quick dot. And then he drops another one right alongside it, a little curl of glass. The heat burns through the stringer, and he's left with a little ball of dark glass. And now another one, right below. Got that on there. Another 
quick flash and heat and then uh, Josh will be finishing up in just a moment here. So he did quite a little bit of work on that nose for you, Robin. Is that how you did the stripes on the one vase? Uh, we had, if you're talking about using the canes like this, uh, no. We can draw on a vase with it. So here goes the tail. It's going to be a little bit more glass, so it'll just keep twirling around. Keep higher on the stick of dark glass until it gets just the right size and burns it free. Alrighty then, and there we go. So now it's time to work on getting this soft. Well, we, we, could, we could probably get some white glass for a cottontail, Suzanne, but uh, this is a little easier to deal with. All righty. If Josh has any final adjustments, like if maybe the ears moved a little or anything, he takes care of that. And there you go. Robin, there's your bunny. She is going to love it. We hope you do too. Alrighty. Thank you. It is cute. Alright, so now what it's going to take is a little bit of water on the joint near the pipe. Todd's got the insulated gloves. They'll tap it free. Todd will put that away after it is fully annealed and comes out. The bottom will be ground flat. So let's hear it for Josh. Let's hear it for everybody, huh? Nice show today, guys. Wonderful. Okay, so that's pretty much it for what we've got to do. Come on down here and take a look and see if we can't convince you to place an order with us. So today we had the uh, long stem jack in the pulpit. Here's three samples right here. More in our catalog online at artifire.com. Check us out. If there's a particular color you want, let us know. Uh, we also saw the multicolored basket, which Todd did. This was a special order for someone that wanted to give it as a gift. All right. We had the cake plate, cake dish, which Josh made. This is a slightly different one, but uh, same principle, different color decoration. And then Todd made us a beautiful hanging heart. And then Josh just made the bunny pig for Robin as a special order. If you'd like to have something made on our broadcast, get in touch with us. It'd be best if you did it maybe by two or three days ahead of a broadcast. But as happened today, we had the time and Robin wanted a piece, so we made it. So any of this you see here or in our catalog is available for sale. And don't forget, we've got lots of different colors. Every one of you that has commented today will be entered in the drawing for this beautiful aqua champagne flute. And congratulations again to Joanna, who won the uh, trumpet bass there, the flower shape. And so from the Art of Fire, this is Bruce. Y'all have a great week. See you next time.